Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and today we're going to be making bee-themed baby shower cookies. In this video, one of the main things we're going to be talking about is stenciling for the first time. So if you're looking to get into stenciling, or maybe you just want to pick up a few more baby shower cookie ideas, then this video is for you. For a detailed video on how I make my sugar cookies, I'm going to throw up a link right in the right-hand corner so you can check that out. I like my sugar cookies a little bit golden on the edge, but if you prefer them less done, then go ahead and take those out before the 13 minute mark. Also keep in mind that oven temperatures vary, so it really depends on your oven. As with most of my sugar cookie decorating tutorials, we're gonna start with using that piping icing to create a border, and then we're going to fill it in with some flood consistency. If you're really not sure what I'm talking about in terms of different icing consistencies, I'm gonna throw up a link in the corner where I go a little bit more in depth with how to get the right consistency for your sugar cookies. When creating interesting sets, I think it's really important to choose different cookie cutters. This particular set is going to be given to my friend as a gift, so I just made one of each cookie. If you were making a party tray or a platter for an event, I think a really good rule of thumb to follow is maybe six or seven different cookie cutters, but all using the same color palette. Using the same color palette will just save you the headache of having to make so many different colors, and it also makes everything look a little bit more cohesive when you do that. Today's cookie video is also being shown to you a little bit differently. Normally I take one cookie and I decorate it from start to finish and then we move on to the next one. But I really wanted to show you what it's really like when I'm making a full set. So as you can see, I've outlined everything and now I'm going back in and I am flooding everything. Doing everything this way is a lot more efficient than finishing one whole cookie because it gives you that time for your base icing to dry. So when you add details on top, it's really, really easy and fast. Also, a little side note, I had my hair up in a really cute little messy bun and I had some tendrils hanging out. And unfortunately, my hair is kind of sticking out into the frame. So my apologies. You'll notice with this carriage, I am specifically only filling in every second part here. If I did them all together, then I'd lose all that definition of that nice puffy carriage look. I am using my Stencil Genie for the very first time today and I have fallen in love with it. It's magnetic so you just kind of sandwich your stencil in between the magnets and it works like a dream. What doesn't work like a dream and never has is my airbrush. It is just so temperamental. Once my husband got my airbrush system working for me again, this whole process worked like a charm. I absolutely love the look of stencils and now I love using them as well. Here are a few tips just for the stencil genie usage itself. Whenever you're applying the airbrush, make sure you don't over apply because you don't want those droplets getting onto your cookie. When you're done airbrushing really gently, you wanna make sure that you lift up. You don't wanna drag the stencil because then you're not going to have a clean stencil. My last little tidbit is that you absolutely need to make sure that your cookie is almost fully dry because the stencil does rest on your cookie, so you don't want to indent anything at all. You'll notice with this carriage that I left certain parts blank because if I tried to do the white before I airbrushed everything, the airbrush would just get everywhere and it's really, really hard to control. Decorating sugar cookies is a series of trying to think of what do I need to decorate first in order for everything to work in the end. Cake decorating is also very similar, but I find because you're working with something so fluid, you really need to make sure that your planning is on point. If you're intimidated by writing on a cookie or writing on a cake, all I can really stress to you is practice, practice, practice. You can use something like a projector to help you with your writing, but honestly, when you're in a rush and you're making a bunch of different cookies, you don't wanna whip out your projector for one or two cookies. Having that writing skill in your back pocket is just super, super useful. This first little bumblebee, I didn't do such a great job on. So we're gonna wait till the next cookie so I can explain that process to you. You'll notice on some of my cookies, I kind of ombre the stencil. All you do for that is you just press the trigger less and you're really sparing as you go up towards whatever part you want lighter with the stencil. 
Who doesn't love Robert Munch? I always read this book around Mother's Day time to my kindergarten students. It's just such a touching book and I love how it kind of fit in with the bee theme. The magic to creating this cookie is using the same color palette that you've been using on all the other cookies, but using different fonts. Using different fonts and sizes also allows you to cheat a little bit. So let's say you made something too big or too small, you can kind of squish it all in there. So when making your little bumblebee, you can take your piping icing and then you're going to kind of make a dot and then swipe through with your piping bag. Then you're going to add some black over top and I kind of just drag that through with my scribe and then you saw me drag through a little bit of pale yellow as well. Now there are lots of different ways to make those stripes for the bumblebee and probably the easiest way would be if you filled a piping bag with icing consistency that was same as the black consistency but I wanted mine to look a little bit more sketchy so that's why I just kind of dragged it through with my cookie scribe. In the beginning, I always thought of cake decorating and cookie decorating as a series of trying to cover up your past mistakes on your cookie. So every little indent that I saw or maybe a little bubble that I wasn't happy with, I added some black lines to it. In many instances now, I actually want to intentionally add these lines, but in some instances, a little bit of imperfection helps me decide where I'm going to start a certain detail. In order to make these flowers, it's the exact same technique as making the little bee wings. You just need to make a dot and swipe through, and then in the center, add a little golden pearl. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of this sweetie fam. Right now I'm uploading daily so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload and be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!